Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we got some pretty good stuff, which is amazing on a Sunday. First up, banks must establish infrastructure for digital assets before it's too late. This is a very well-written article, but there's three criteria and why it's all going to lead to banks collapsing. Also, the SEC issues no action letter in response to digital asset securities questions. So what this means is it's a hands-off approach to securities. And what is this going to mean for the overall cryptocurrency digital asset market? I think it'll be huge. Also, in one of the most depressing stories of the day, KuCoin's hack drags Ocean Protocol and Uniswap into the mud. So we're going to go over what's happening, happening exactly with Ocean, how it's being dragged down, and how Uniswap could be in the eyes of the regulators starting very soon. We'll go over all of that in Q and C of the day at the very end, but first let's jump into the market. So what is going on? So today, Sunday, September 27th, everything's going good. Not a bad start. What do we got? Bitcoin as at 10.7, down 0.1%, down 3% for the week. But hey, you know what? Uh, I thought I was going to dip below 10. And here we are at 10.7. So I'm pretty happy about that. Ethereum's keeping that line above 350. Fantastic job, Ethereum. Tether's Tether with a market cap of 15 billion. Nobody cares. XRP, also the second stable coin. I'm just kidding. I always call it a stable coin. It's not, but it's, it's crazy that you'll have good news about ripple you have good news about a partnership you know someone using xrp and the price just stays the same unbelievable then you have something like uh you know tomato coin somebody picks it up off the ground and says it's really shiny and it goes up 10 percent it's just that's cryptocurrency what can you do bitcoin cash up 2.1 percent and uh again there might be some uh, big news on the uh, hard fork coming up in november um well not really news i think it's i know it's going to happen so maybe there might be more tokens on the on the horizon and then, hey who knows uh bitcoin cash and uh, xrp only six billion separates them now nah, i'm just kidding no, they won't flip uh chain link up four percent fantastic 1071 i like to see that and then what else is big cardano up eight percent uh bitcoin sv i don't still don't know why it's in the top 10 i have no clue somebody please help me out on that one monero up four percent great what is uh, some other big losers or gainers yearn up three percent at thirty thousand yeah it was just like twenty thousand not too many days ago unbelievable and uh nothing really too fantastic just kind of in between that one and five percent area either up or down mostly down a little bit of a red but it is sunday that's normal that's par for the course uh interesting stuff but Let's jump into the real big stories. First up, uh, this was so well written. Uh, I have to ask the question, who wrote this? And the title was Banks Must Establish Infrastructure for Digital Assets Before It's Too Late. And let's just scroll all the way down and find out who the heck this is. So this is uh, actually two people, uh, Gunnar Harv, Jarv, I know I didn't say that right, and Glenn Wu. I think I nailed that one. So Gunnar is a chief operating officer of First Digital Trust, Hong Kong's technology-driven financial institution, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, prior to joining First Digital Trust, Gunner founded several tech startups, including Hong Kong-based Peak Digital. And Gunner, managing director of APAC at Ledger, an industry leader in developing security infrastructure solutions for cryptos and blockchain applications. Extensive career in financial services, technology industry, working for S&P Global Market. So uh, these two guys, uh, looks like it was worked together and it's really great. And let's just jump into it. The big stuff is, this is the big takeaway that I, I, I took from the whole thing, which was uh, banks will fail. And uh, the only way that they can bail themselves out is to partner up with the uh, new systems that are coming about, uh, whatever cryptocurrency digital assets they can get their grubby little hands on, because if they do it from scratch, uh, they're gonna fail just like Blockbuster. Anyhow, what's going on here? So the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, or OCC, officially announced that all nationally chartered banks in the US can provide custody services for a cryptocurrency. This was like a month or two back and uh, everybody was like, super excited about that. And uh, you know, we're like, oh, this is gonna be great. And they're gonna do it. But uh, there was a great article. This is how I got in touch with Alex Maschioli. And he said, hold your horses. That's not gonna happen. Banks aren't known for innovation. And uh, he was totally right. They haven't done anything. And here we are, what, a couple months later. So, hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, July 29th? Yeah, about a couple months. So the big question, or one of the big questions that these banks are asking is, is, hey, where are these newly acquired digital assets going to be stored? How do we do that? Because we can't just put like money in a vault. We can't put gold in the vault. Not that they do that anyhow, I might add, because most of the time it's like they have 1% of their total cash flow in the actual bank. And most of it's just zeros and ones on a uh, digital ledger. They have no money. If you went into the bank, 
right now, or let's just say 5% of people went to their local branch and said, I want all my money back. Uh, they wouldn't be able to do it. They're like, uh, sorry, sir, or man, we don't keep money here. We're just a bank. <laughs> So anyhow, that's one of their problems. So where are they going to store these digital assets? Because they have no idea. According to Financial Action Task Force's yearly report, the industry, let me move this, the industry's lack of infrastructure is limiting compliance and safe storage of assets. As traditional financial markets begin to embrace the space, they must develop robust, tailored technology solutions with the strength of a legacy system. So let me just back up. What they're saying here is that they have to pretty much go from scratch. They have to build this from the ground floor up, and later they'll talk about partnerships, and they need to do all this and innovate because they're banks. I read this and I almost snorted because I was laughing. And uh, it's just it just comes down to the fact of they won't, and that's why they're gonna be left behind. I don't dislike, I hold on, I'll be honest with you, I do dislike banks. I dislike some banks, especially my banks, because I've always talked about them. My personal bank's awesome, USAA. My business banks suck, and they got a lot of problems, and there's a lot of fees, and I just don't like them. But uh, besides that, I mean, the people that work in banks, I like the people. People are good. Uh, it's just that the banks themselves, they're just bloated, and they're uh, archaic, and they need to go. And they're going to be left behind. So the thing is that they're not going to innovate, just like Blockbuster. Does anybody remember Blockbuster streaming? Neither do I. But guess what? It did happen. And uh, I had to look it up. And Blockbuster Streaming came about because they were trying to compete with Netflix. And they said, oh, we can do that. We're a huge corporation. And guess what? They failed because Netflix was nimble and they were young and they could make all these different decisions and just move in different directions that the normal Blockbuster corp worldwide corporation could not do because they were just bloated top heavy. And uh, that's exactly what's going on here. That's how I think it's going to happen with all industries. You're going to see a bunch of disruptors come up because they can do all these things, because they don't have upper middle management weighing them down. And that's just unfortunately um, how innovation really takes root. So moving down, um, I'm not going to go over the whole thing. I mean, it was very interesting. I'm going to link it in the, to the uh, description of, uh, of this video, but uh, I'll just give you the highlights. The future of finance is moving fast. And if banks don't incorporate the correct protective and regulative mechanisms, assets are at great risk. So meaning if they don't do this right from the ground up, they're going to lose a lot of money, a lot of your money. And uh, I just said, he, I'm like, they're not going to do that. They, they're going to fail because they're too big to succeed, just like what I talked about. Blockbuster is an obvious uh, example. But this is another, here's another great example that I found. that I've been used this actually a couple of times. And this is um, it's a great one from Data is Beautiful. And they just talk about how the different browsers that came about. If you notice, uh, Internet Explorer around 2001, remember all the way back then, uh, it had 92% uh, market share or you know 92 percent of people were using internet explorer because it was the go-to and you know who makes internet explorer microsoft and they were huge they were a billion dollar company and all these goofy mosaic opera netscape i mean they tried to compete netscape actually had uh, the market share at the beginning but uh microsoft said we're gonna crush you and then they're gonna they probably thought to themselves we're gonna stay on top well watch this here's this thing called firefox out of nowhere and just comes up in safari but who uses Safari? only people with Macs. and uh it just started to gain and gain and gain i'm not gonna bore you to death but uh i'm gonna fast forward to a minute and 15 this is 2005 i might add and watch what happens so Firefox is getting traction. Internet Explorer, why is it? There's a thing called Chrome. What's Chrome? No one knows. Just some goofy Google something or other. And all of a sudden, there's just these guys who work out of a out of their garage. They start crushing everybody. And here they are. And Chrome starts to take over. Google takes over. And Google is what it is right now. Just like banks. Banks are the same type of thing. And they're like, you know what? We're going to crush everybody because we have all the money and all the people and whatever else. But guess what? You can't innovate. You can't move fast enough. You're not nimble. And that's just how it is. All right, I'll step off my soapbox for a second and scroll down. So they say we foresee a parallel system running which players will use infrastructure that works significantly different from traditional payments, networks, or settlement flows. And it's all going to come down to can they innovate? Can they catch up? And uh, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's finish this up. So it states if banks move too quickly to capitalize in the booming space, and I'm sure it's very tempting because if you're a bank, you're like, wow, this is a, this could be the next trillion dollar industry. We need to get on top of this. Um, should we do it right? Well, we'll try, but who knows? We're the banks. So like I say here, I mean, they are the ones that created, I mean, pretty much the AML and KYC, uh, know your customer and anti-money laundering. And we just had a story 
last week where uh, there was over two trillion dollars uh, money laundered. So they can't even, you know, keep in keep in line with their own infrastructure that, that they built themselves. They can't even stop money laundering. Um, so I said, what makes you think they'll put the customer first? <laughs> They've got to make profits. I just don't think it's going to work out. So lastly, banks entering crypto custody will need tried and true crypto asset technology developed specifically for the industry and will inevitably face the build versus buy decision. So really, if you're a pretty big company, you're like, we don't have the, the time to do all this stuff. We just want to pay somebody to do it. And that's, I think, their only option. I don't think they're going to build it from the ground up. I know JP Morgan's trying to do that. But again, same type of thing. I don't think that nimble. I think they have middle management, top management heavy. And to make all the decisions and move as fast as they need to, they're going to lose out. So they should just buy it from the ground from somebody else. The implementation process is not easy, nor is it cheap. They cannot cut corners. Banks will need to develop a team to research and make recommendations, seek approvals, build a team, test prototype technology, and conduct regular cybersecurity assessments. So why would they do it themselves? Just buy it from somebody else. And I know everybody right now probably has their own idea of what that cryptocurrency could be for the banks. And uh, sure, I mean, it could be a number of them. And I don't care what it is. I just want it to be one of them because I'm the biggest cheerleader for all the cryptocurrency. I mean, for the most part, I make fun of XRP because it's a love-hate relationship I have. I just be, I'll be honest. But uh, look, when the, when the water rushes in, all the ships rise. I think if what's good for one is good for all. And if we can get a couple different cryptocurrencies, the bank's like, this is our whatever. Uh, we want to use this one. Sure. I'm happy. I'm cheerleading. I'm, I'm ecstatic. And then lastly, it states this in itself can take years. And uh, if you've been in the space any, any length of time, if you're talking about years, um, what just happened with DeFi in the last month? So <laughs> good luck catching up. And then I just have a little story about Steve Jobs and Bill Gates developed the computer revolution in their garages. Um, and then, you know, IBM, they they could have crushed everybody. They had so much money back in the 80s. But Bill Gates said, hey, uh, I wrote the OS and I'm going to license it to you. So you want to pay me or you want to build your own team to do it? Because I got it right here. And like, sure. And look how that worked out for Gates. So my final thoughts are this. Kraken Financial Services. Uh, they just got a banking license in Wyoming. Uh, they are an exchange. I use them. I recommend them. Uh, they will be the new beacon of light example for what I believe banks to emulate. And I think they're going to go to them like, how do we do this? What's going on? I think that banking license for Kraken is going to push them above all the other exchanges. Just my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.